Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of the fabric and patterns I picked up recently, as well as tell you a little bit about my summer sewing plans. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a mix of new modern pieces as well as vintage or thrifted pieces. So there's going to be a little bit of both. So I hope that's interesting for you. So if you want to see all of the fabric and patterns I picked up recently, just keep watching. So the first pattern I picked up recently I bought from a seller on Facebook and it's this Vintage Simplicity 5401 pattern. And what attracted me to this pattern was the princess seamed bodice. It looks like a really beautiful princess seamed design and it's got a nice flared skirt which I like. I also love the collar detail as well as view one in the red dress that has the contrast collar and sleeve detail with the white um, piping or white fabric there. I think that's really pretty. And it just looks like a really practical dress that I could maybe wear to work or wear around. So I was super excited about this pattern. Another vintage pattern I picked up that I was super excited about is this Very Easy Vogue 8717. And this pattern has a top, pair of pants, and a jacket. I initially was attracted to the halter top in this pattern. It is pretty simple, I'm sure you could draft something similar on your own. But then the more I looked at the jacket, the more I thought the jacket was really amazing as well. And I love the way that it almost looks like a mix of a jacket and a loose overshirt, which is kind of cool. So this is one that I'm hoping to make sometime soon, but it might be more of a fall sewing project for me. Another pattern I picked up was this Butterick John Kloss 5118 pattern and it's got uh, several different views. It looks like five different views for a long dress made of a stretchy fabric like a knit. I'll admit when I first bought this pattern I thought it was for wovens so I was a little excited about the dress so I'm slightly disappointed that it's for knits but I still think it's a beautiful pattern. And what attracted me to this pattern was the neckline option. So you can see in views A to C, you have this crossover neckline that's a little bit low cut and looks really flattering. And then in views D and E, you have this kind of cowl neckline, which I thought was really pretty. And I haven't seen anything quite like this. So I'm really excited about this one as well. I have no plans to sew this one up anytime soon, but maybe come fall or winter, I'll want to give it a try. And then the last vintage pattern I wanted to show you is probably not as old as the other patterns, but I still think it's been out of date for a while. It's this very easy Vogue 8562 pattern, and it's kind of like this gathered jacket. And what attracted me to this pattern was the waist tie. You can see there's this thick elastic casing in the middle of the jacket with a very thick waist tie, and I thought it was a cool design. And I also think the silhouette is really modern and relevant for right now with kind of the oversized sleeves and that high crossover neckline. I've just never seen anything quite like this, and I think you could make this in a sweater knit, and it could be a really pretty sweater, or you can make it in a raincoat fabric, and it would be a really practical and fun raincoat. So I would like to give this one a try, but probably not for the summer because I have the rest of the year to wear jackets, and this is the only time of year where I don't have to wear jackets, so I'll save this one for cooler weather. So I forgot to tell you guys about a couple other patterns I picked up. I got this vintage style 2933 pattern, and the detail in this pattern that made me want to pick it up is this interesting waist. You can see the middle of the dress has this almost diamond shaped waist panel, and it can also have a variation where it laces up, so I thought that was really neat. And then around my birthday, I also decided to treat myself to a Fiber Mood magazine. I've never bought a sewing magazine before, but I was looking at the patterns online, and there's at least two or three in here that I really wanted to buy, so I thought it would be fun to look through the magazine. So many of these patterns look really interesting, like these Elba waistcoat, an Amelia button-up dress. There's a quilted bomber coat in here. There's the Tammy dress, which has a triangular ruffle feature on the front. And also the Lucille dress, which has a cutout on the waist and then these dramatic sleeves. So. I'm really excited to sew up some patterns from this magazine and it's so beautiful. I just love flipping through it when I have some spare time. Okay, so moving on to fabric, I want to tell you about probably my favorite thing in this entire video and that is this gorgeous yarn dyed checkered pink fabric. 
This is a vintage fabric. I bought it from a seller on Etsy and it's actually a vintage textile and this seller sources vintage textiles that were made in China in around the 70s and 80s. And this was hand woven around that time and it's a gorgeous textile. I've never seen anything quite like it before. When it first got to me, it had some age stains, a lot of discoloration, a lot of yellow spots, but I soaked it over the course of two days in a vintage textile soak, and then I carefully washed it, and it's come up absolutely beautifully. And when I bought this, I did have a project in mind, and that is the Friday Pattern Company Heather Blazer. So I recently purchased this pattern because I've had a mild blazer obsession recently. Ever since I bought one blazer to wear to work to kind of play with and see if it fit into my wardrobe, I've been really interested in having more blazers to wear both to work and casually. And I've heard this pattern is a great place to start because it's more of an unstructured, modern, um, less tailored blazer. So I thought it would be good for someone who hasn't done a lot of tailoring like me. Also, I love the modern silhouette. It's a long line, it's oversized, it's got that relaxed modern vibe. So I'm planning on making this blazer out of my yarn dyed cotton fabric. And to go along with the yarn dyed cotton, I did pick up this pink cotton poplin lining fabric from Blackbird Fabrics. They recently had a sale and I decided that I wanted to pick this up and it's a pretty good match considering I bought it online. So this will line my blazer. And this is probably the project I'm most excited for. I can't wait to just dive in and get started with this. I think it's going to be so fun. One interesting thing about this handwoven cotton is that it's very narrow because it was woven on vintage looms by hand. So this is actually the entire width of it right here. It's probably about 20 to 24 inches wide, so very narrow. So because of that, I bought a large amount, like 10 yards or something like that to make sure I had enough for the blazer. So I'm really excited to dive into this one. I'm gonna take my time cutting it out, try my best to do some pattern matching for this plaid and just hoping for a really neat finish. I'm also excited to make an all cotton blazer because I think it's gonna be really breathable, really practical, and this cotton is gonna give it a nice textured, airy, relaxed vibe, which I'm really excited about. I'll definitely share this project on this channel, so do uh, follow along if you're interested in this one. So next up fabric-wise is another gorgeous fabric I got from Blackbird Fabrics, and it is this lightweight cotton voil, and it's in this beautiful navy blue color, and it's got this gorgeous floral print on it. And I think what really sold me on this print was the fact that it looks so vintage. It looks very 90s inspired to me. And I really loved the floral prints from that time. It's very understated and elegant, which I love. The fabric itself is really lightweight, airy, and breathable. And I think it's going to be a dream both to sew with and to actually wear. So I first see this one becoming a dress. So right now I'm just trying to decide if I want this to become a really classic wrap dress or if I want it to become a button front dress. I have a few patterns in mind for this one. So I'm kind of debating between a few patterns that I already own. I have this McCall's M794, for example, which has a button up the front and I've seen some really gorgeous dresses made from this. For me personally, I'm a little concerned that with my personal style, by the time I make this dress in a floral print fabric, it might lean a little too feminine for what I wear all the time. So I'm just trying to decide if this is what I want. I also have a great wrap dress pattern. It's this Butterick 5030 pattern, and I've used it in the past to make a linen wrap dress. And what stood out to me when I made this Butterick wrap dress was how perfect the fit was. It's actually surprisingly hard to find a wrap dress that has darts placed in the right location, so I found it really hugged the body well, and it was just a gorgeous silhouette. So I'm thinking a wrap dress in this fabric would be beautiful, but I would want to do something fun with the sleeves, so I'm just thinking about it a little bit, and my final option would be more of a button-up shirt dress that has a collar. So one pattern that kind of came to mind as well when I was looking around was one from Named Clothing. It's their Rita Midi shirt dress and it's got a collar and it buttons up the front and it's a little bit more casual but i feel like done up in this cotton it could look really gorgeous as well and i also was maybe thinking perhaps this simplicity 5401 this vintage pattern that i found i think it could potentially be really special 
as well for something like this. So I'm just thinking about it, but I really do want to use this fabric this summer. My goal is to sew at least one or two floral dresses because again, it's just that time of year and I don't get that opportunity very often to sew summery dresses. So I think um, for sure I'm gonna be using this fabric. I just have to decide which pattern I wanna use. So next up fabric wise, I did purchase some swim fabrics from Blackbird Fabrics when I made my big order because I've been wanting to try sewing swimwear for a while and I had some really successful activewear projects this past year which makes me think I'm ready to try swim and they had some really fun and inspiring swimwear designs so I thought it would be cool to try it out. So first up I have this kind of mossy green color. This is one of my favorite colors of all time so I thought it would be a safe bet to buy for swimwear and it has a really nice texture. It's fairly thick so I wouldn't feel worried about it being see-through or anything and I think this one will be really fun to sew with. And then kind of the star of the show is this squiggly lined green, black, and pink fabric and this is just so fun. When I saw this one I was so inspired to sew with it and some of the samples they'd made up for their models were really really cool as well. I'll put a few pattern photos up on the screen with ideas of what I'm thinking for these but I'm definitely hoping to sew some swimwear with these this year. Okay, so next up fabric wise is another one of my favorite buys and it's this gorgeous yarn dyed linen. It's a creamy white and green stripes, which I really love. Again, you guys know I love green. It's one of my favorite colors to wear. So I thought this would be a great bet. And I've kind of been wanting to make another jumpsuit for my wardrobe this year because I get a lot of wear out of the Zadie jumpsuit that I made previously. So I am 90 90, 95% sure that this is destined to become another Zadie jumpsuit. And I think there's lots of opportunities to play around with stripes and placement on a jumpsuit. For example, you could play around with the direction of the stripe, so you could have some going vertically and some going horizontally to kind of give some visual interest. And it's a really classic design, so it's something that I know I won't get tired of. I am also playing with the idea of using another jumpsuit pattern, maybe something with no sleeves which would be kind of fun for the summer but this one is a gorgeous fabric and i'm really happy i decided to splurge on it because it feels really special and i know i'm going to be able to make something that i love to wear all the time okay and last up for fabrics that i bought recently i bought some more of the blackbird fabrics bamboo rib knits and i've used these before for example, when I made my emerald green tank top last year, I wear that tank top all the time and I've been wanting some more summer basics that I love. So I thought it would be a good idea to order some more fabric and make myself tank tops, t-shirts, maybe some turtlenecks, that kind of thing. This fabric is really great because it's extremely stretchy, four-way stretch, and it's really soft and comfortable on the skin. And it's also fairly breathable as well because it's bamboo. And I like that the white is very opaque. I hate that all, almost all of the white tank tops and t-shirts and turtlenecks you come across in the store are see-through. And that's just not usually the look I'm going for. So I'm excited to make myself some basics out of this fabric that won't be see-through. And then I also picked up the bamboo rib knit in another color as well. So it's this beautiful sagey green color. Again, this is a very safe and very stable color for me. So I thought it made sense to buy this one to make some basic pieces. Alrighty, so next up fabric wise is this really fun seersucker cotton fabric and I got this from a seller on Etsy. I had actually originally thought this was dead stock or old stock fabric, but when I went back to double check the listing, I guess it's a new textile, so that's kind of too bad. I thought it was vintage, but that's just my mistake for not reading the listing carefully. But it's this fun seersucker cotton fabric and it's got a plaid pattern with pink, green, and red stripes. When I originally bought this, I was thinking it might work well for the Heather blazer, but once I got it here and I noticed just how puckered the fabric was, I thought it would maybe be a little bit ambitious for my first blazer to try to work with a puckered fabric like this, so I think I want to save this for something else. I am thinking of making it into a Helen's Closet Gilbert top because I've been wanting to make more button-up and camp style collar shirts for my wardrobe. And that's another pattern that I recently purchased as well. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is destined to be. Okay, so if you're still watching this far in the video, I thought it would be fun to throw in some of the other thrift finds I found recently. Some of them are sewing related, some are not. So let me show you what I found. 
So first up I found this really cool vintage blazer and I got this from the Toronto Vintage Market a month or two ago when I went with my friend. And this is a wool and viscose blazer and the, the lining is made of an acetate fabric. And what drew me to this blazer were firstly the color. I really like this pinky brown checked plaid wool. And then the lining fabric is this really fun, rich pinky color, almost a magenta. So I thought it would be really, really cool. But when I tried it on, I noticed that the shoulders are comically large. <laughs> And I know some people are really cool with rocking like an over large blazer and then belting it down But I'm a little self-conscious about my shoulders because actually have very large shoulders So I don't necessarily love to emphasize them But I bought this blazer anyways because I thought it would be fun to try to Refit it for myself and maybe learn a little bit more about blazer construction So once I'm done sewing my heather blazer and I have a little bit more of an idea of what a blazer is like I'm planning on taking this apart and taking in the shoulders a bit and perhaps I will narrow it a little bit too to make it a more modern silhouette. But yeah, I was really excited about this and look out for this one on a thrift flip on my channel soon. Okay, and finally, this is not sewing related at all, but I wanted to give a shout out to this adorable cup and saucer that I got at my local thrift store. I was kind of wanting a cup and saucer for a long time. I feel like they're not the most practical because the cup is so small, but I'm just really happy to have found something so beautiful to drink my tea out of. I've already been using it a little bit and it just makes every day feel a little bit more special when you're drinking out of such a pretty cup and saucer. So I was really excited about this find as well. Okay guys, so I hope you liked hearing about the fabric and patterns that I picked up recently. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing because I do lots of sewing related content on my channel. And please let me know in the comments below which of these fabrics was your favorite and also tell me about what your summer sewing plans are because I would love to hear about it. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.